Hello everybody, welcome to Toya and Robert's Objects of Desire. A few more precious things from Toya and Robert. So what have you got this week, Robert? This is my primary precious thing for this week. A Polaroid. Yes, this is a photograph taken of me with Gilda Radner in New York in December 1980 backstage at Hall and Oates Christmas radio show. Now, I was invited by Daryl to take part in their Christmas party playing You Burn Me Up, I'm a Cigarette, which Daryl sung on this album, Exposure. This is the guitar that I was playing on that show. What is it? This is a Gibson Les Paul. This is the second vintage Les Paul. 1959 that I bought in New York in about March 1978 so I needn't carry a Les Paul back and across the Atlantic. Now I met Daryl in 1974 when Hall and Oates were playing in Bournemouth and which is only nine or ten miles from Wimborne and I went to meet them see the show and got on very well with Daryl. Our friendship developed when I moved to New York in February 1977. Daryl is an Anglophile who has visited England for many years and lived here too, and even stayed in my cottage in Holt Wimborne in the late 1970s. Now, last Saturday, Daryl came here to visit for afternoon tea. Our friendship has been ongoing, but we haven't really seen much of each other for years and years and years and years. And all of you folks out there will know, live from Daryl's house, and Daryl this past Saturday afternoon asked me if I would like to appear on live at Daryl's house on the new season beginning this September. I produced Daryl's first solo album, Sacred Songs, four songs from which Daryl has in the past featured on Live from Daryl's House, plus he has also played on that live me, uh, North Star from this Exposure album, which had Eno on synthesizer, Phil Collins on drums and Tony Levin in bass. I just throw that away. So, in the future, I am very much looking forward to continuing and developing and strengthening my relationship with old pal Daryl and once again this precious thing, Gilda Radner from Hall & Oates Christmas Show, December 1980. That's my precious That's thing. That's in pristine condition, I'm amazed. It has been kept in this little book for many years. Okay. Now, my precious thing is I bought Robert two of these in the year 2000 in a shop in the UK we call TK Maxx. In America it's called something else, isn't something it? Something TM Maxx, yes. something like that. Now, the reason this is a precious thing is that we've had it for 22 years and its sibling, which is exactly the same. It is so well designed, it is so well made, it has survived our house for 22 years. And this is what Robert and I have our monster margaritas in and guests do as well. And I want to point it out because it's a proof that design, glass design can be tough. It has an extra kind of lip at the top of the glass. This has been banged about. It hasn't been dropped, but it has certainly been tested throughout time. I believe it's Polish glass and it is designed in a way that it can survive time. And it just shows that glass can survive time if made and designed in the right way. So I wanted to show that. Now I'm going to get this out of the way because the other thing I'm going to show is so precious I am terrified of lifting it up. So I moved to London in 1976 and my life really started in London in 1977. I am one year older than Robert's guitar. And there was a shop in London just outside Notting Hill called Strange Ways that used to feature artists' work, up and coming artists. This is where I got my Geiger book from. Now this, is a slightly obscene 
china doll made to hang up. So it's made in slip wear. So this would have been liquid china poured into slip wear. And there were two of these dolls in existence. I am terrified of holding this up. One was all black with a white face. I brought the one that was all red with a white face. Now, I really regret not getting the, the other one as well that was painted black because they are a pair. And it's so extraordinary in its design, in its achievement, and the fact that this still exists after 42 years of existing. Now, I did used to know who the designer and who the artist was, and I'm just going to try and see, but I don't think I'm going to be lucky today. I will have to research it. So that is still intact. It's been with me everywhere I have been. I love it so much. I treasure it so much that it's just stayed with me, as has the cloth it sits on by Elvis Jesus Couture, which existed in the late 80s. Now, I hope if the designers of Elvis G Jesus Couture are watching this, I hope you're amazed that I still have it because it was sent to me. And my beautiful China doll sits on that with a message under it. Do not touch, do not clean, do not breathe, do not bring anything near this China doll. How would you express that positively, dear? Please keep her intact for the rest of time. There we are. Yes. Was, that an, was I expressing a negative? You were expressing the negatives, dear. So let's... Positive, please. Keep me safe. Keep me safe. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was our Objects of Desire for today. For tomorrow, we have an exclusive. It's a single that Fripp, myself, Simon Darlow have made together. Simon is one of the main writers of the song. It's a very well-known song. It's Slave to the Rhythm, and we're previewing it to you tomorrow because I'm playing the Isle of Wight Festival and playing it live for the first time at the Isle of Wight Festival and praying that it's going to be televised. I've done the contract for it to be televised live. So let's see what happens. So that's Sunday lunch tomorrow. What does this say here? The rhythm of life. Slave to the rhythm of life. So the meaning when Simon wrote this song, um, Slave to the Rhythm, was that we are all slaves to the rhythm of life. So that's why that poster says that. Wonderful, sweetie. Good to see you all. Stay safe. Please be well. See you tomorrow for Sunday lunch. And of course, it is slightly outrageous, as you would expect. <laughs>